Welcome to the third module of this course on international arbitration. In this module, you will be introduced to a specific form of mixed arbitration, the arbitration of investment disputes. Arbitration between states and non-state actors, individuals or private companies, is often referred to as mixed arbitration in international scholarship. Mixed arbitration thus implies an arbitral procedure in which only one of the parties is a state. There are two notable examples of mixed arbitrations in international law. First, the Iran-US Claims Tribunal, and secondly, investment arbitration. This module will focus on the latter mainly. Investor-state arbitration as such is not as old as interstate arbitration, which we have discussed in the first module. That being said, there are some early examples. We discussed in the first module the history of international arbitration, in which I pointed you to various mixed claims commissions, which adjudicated disputes between nationals of one state and another state. Also, the substantive protection offered to foreign investors, notably protection from unlawful expropriation, does have ancient roots and dates from the late 19th and early 20th century. The current organization of investment arbitration finds its origin in the middle of the 20th century, when large multinationals obtained important concessions for the extraction of natural resources in developing countries. Typically and traditionally, if a foreign investor, and more generally a national of another state, had a dispute with a state in which the investment was made, which we call the host state, the dispute would need to be brought before the domestic courts of the host state. This is so because a foreign state cannot be brought to justice in another state's courts, since states enjoy immunity from foreign jurisdiction. If such a claim in the domestic courts of the host state could not remedy the violation complained of, the foreign investor could ask his state to file a claim in diplomatic protection against the host state, a procedure in which the home state of the investor espouses the claim of its national. Diplomatic protection, however, is not always efficient. First, the foreign investor should exhaust all local remedies. Secondly, the right to act in diplomatic protection is a right of the home state of the investor, not of the investor itself. In other words, no state is under an obligation to act in diplomatic protection. Thirdly, if the home state of the investor decides to act in diplomatic protection, one still needs the consent of both states to have such claim settled through arbitration or judicial means. Fourthly, claims in diplomatic protection were in practice very often accompanied by economic and military pressure by the home state, and this caused an important politicization of the dispute. Moreover, the domestic tribunals of the host state were perceived as being biased and lacking independence. You will have understood that such a procedure was not effective nor feasible in the future, especially in a globalizing world in which foreign investment was and still is growing. The main objective of the recourse to arbitration in concession contracts was to depoliticize the settlement of investor state disputes and to provide a neutral forum to have such disputes settled. Arbitration was thus increasingly incorporated in contracts concluded by states and foreign investors regarding specific investment operations. Nowadays, investor-state arbitration is mainly used to settle disputes arising out of bilateral or multilateral investment treaties concluded between states. These treaties grant certain rights to investors of states that invest in another state party. For investors usually have the right to be treated fairly and equitably, the right not to be discriminated, or the right not to have their property expropriated without compensation. When an investor considers that the rights contained in the treaty have not been respected, and that the host state, therefore, in which the investor has invested, has breached its treaty obligations, the investor can bring a claim directly against that state. Of course, this presupposes that there is a treaty signed by the home state of the investor and the host state, and that the treaty contains an arbitration clause which allows the investor to bring such a claim. At this stage, there are more than 3,000 signed investment treaties, 
which grant rights to foreign investors and which, for the vast majority, contain an arbitration clause allowing investors to bring claims directly against the host state for breaches of that treaty. In this video, you have learned about the history and the reasons underlying investor state arbitration. In the next video of this module, you will learn the main principles of how investor state arbitration works and which types of claims foreign investors can bring.